Hello and welcome back to another Factorio tutorial. My name is Negative Root and let's get cracking. Today we're talking about... What are we talking about? We're talking about buffer storage overhead and co production capacity. Um, thank you, my little pretties. Now, buffer storage. What we're going to talk about here is the idea of having a bit of a backup. Um, you'll notice that on any production graphs that there are kind of peaks and troughs. As you zoom out, you see that there's these natural up and downs in the production and the uh, consumption as well. Now this is natural, it just happens cause, um, and it's true for all systems. Now buffer storage will actually level this out. You'll notice that most of my lines are pretty pretty stable um, over the, the short term, these big upticks. You'll notice that when something upticks, the consumption kind of um, matches and there's no real huge decline on the other side. So buffer storage is about trying to level out those production peaks and troughs into one consistent line where when you have something that's consistently producing you know an item for example you know we're just churning out a couple of these every minute um, over time you know a store will build up a bit of an overhead where you know if we have a sudden burst of requirement for sulfur we will actually have the storage um, where we can just run on that for a little bit and then over time it catches up now I want to demonstrate what happens when there's buffer storage and when there's not and then when you lose the input now obviously there's an insert a stack bonus on the left as well but I figure that's um, part of the fun and part of the demonstration so you'll notice that both sides are running equally. This side has nothing between, um, and you have to use your um, imagination a little bit here. Imagine this is something producing the raw product, and these are consumers. So for example, this is a smelter, and this is, I don't know, iron gear factories, for example. It's um, just one way of visualizing how the system will work. Now what happens when this goes away you'll notice that the right one stops but the left one keeps going this gives you time to notice that oh shit there's a problem I might need to fix this the one classic example is is just doing this for your um, for your power generation for your your boilers having this set up so that um, you know if you do run out of coal if you do run out of fuel your factory just doesn't instantly stop dead it does continue to run for a little bit and does continue to work for you so that is a little bit about buffer storage now buffer storage um, is an idea to introduce where you can now production overhead is the next thing that we're going to talk about if we were to put a huge drain for example these are set to build 5,000 they have 5,000 so you'll notice that our production at the moment is about 900 a minute let's put a massive drain on this and cut 700 out of the system moving to our production you see that at the moment we're making a thousand and that might actually stay steady because of our production down here yeah okay tough to demonstrate this stuff that was still <laughs> actually here we go I know what was happening there so that these factories have been working flat out because they're trying to fill up my buffer storage here you'll notice that that's not full and these will continue to work um, at a rate of about a thousand per minute let me go find something that's actually going to demonstrate this properly yep, okay So these are set to a thousand. Let's see if we can put a big drain on it. So our production right now for red circuits is 36 a minute. Let's see if this one will work. Okay. There we go. So you notice that it's jumped up to 132, 120. So it's gone four times the speed. 
Now that difference in what we were producing before, which was you know 32 a minute, um, to what we're producing now is that is the overhead. That's our production capacity. That's the level to which our assemblers can actually ramp up their production if they they're needed. Um, because I've you know put a big drain on these, um, suddenly the system's like, okay, well we need to build more. Let's kick it into gear. So having that spare capacity will allow me to now fill up my buffer storage that little bit faster which then in turn allows my factory to run a little bit quicker now this is a fairly advanced concept and I haven't done a very good job of explaining it I'm afraid uh, but just remember that production of capacity is the ability to speed up so if you have lots of ability to speed up and produce things faster you have lots of the overhead if you don't have the ability to go any faster than you are, everything's working flat out and you're not getting anywhere, you're at your max, you'd have no overhead, you have no extra production capacity. Um, and this linked with buffer storage allows me to say, okay, well, let's get a few, a few of these in storage, let's get a thousand of them in storage and just keep them there. I'm figuring because I have lots of production capacity, I don't need a larger buffer storage. Generally, if you have low production capacity, you want a bigger buffer storage. That allows the factory to work and use time to your advantage. Rather than requiring everything to be made instantaneously um, for you and have your factory be so nimble that it can keep up with your every whim, generally it's an idea of having some storage of each item so that as you need it, the factory can supply it. And then over time, it can catch up with that demand. It doesn't have to do it instantly. So that is the crux of what I'm talking about. That's been uh, buffer storage, production capacity, and overhead. Uh, thank you very much for joining me, ladies and gentlemen. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode uh, where we're going to talk about um, agility. I mentioned it a little bit in this video, but that'll be the next one. So thank you very much for joining me, and I'll see you then.